Today, we are going to tell you about an amazing place that in just a few decades has been transformed from a lifeless desert into a striking metropolis. The world's tallest buildings, sports cars, and expensive hotels, huge artificial islands and luxurious beaches, and almost no crime. We're going to talk about Dubai, the largest city in the United Arab Emirates. But before we begin, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with future content. And as usual, the longer you watch, the more interesting it becomes because the most surprising things always show up at the end of the video. Once it was a lifeless desert, but today there are huge skyscrapers, long tree-lined avenues, and even a canal with ferries. A place that has experienced amazing changes, Dubai is the largest city in the United Arab Emirates. Its coastline is 45 miles, and the area of the city itself is more than 1,500 square miles. In 2022, Dubai ranked fourth most popular destination for tourists, even though it is considered one of the world's hottest cities. In December and January, it can be 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And in summer, the temperature quickly reaches the mark of 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Moreover, all this happens in a humid climate. So what makes this city so appealing to tourists? A wide range of entertainment, amazing records, and of course, silence and tranquility. The streets are indeed very quiet, and the locals are extremely polite and courteous. No wonder, since you can easily end up in jail for a public insult or an obscene gesture. Yes, Dubai has strict laws. You can't drink alcohol anywhere except at home, in hotels, bars, and restaurants. You can't kiss in public or even hitchhike. And if you have a dirty car, the tow truck can easily take it away with a fine of almost $275. However, the most frustrating limitations for tourists are the ban on photography and filming. You cannot take pictures of government offices and some attractions. And forget about drones. To use them, you need insurance and a special license. Hardly anyone would do it on vacation. The ban on filming is closely related to censorship. Dubai cares so much about its image that it is impossible to find any negative news. Of course, incidents are extremely rare here, but they still happen. No matter what happens, they won't mention it in the news, all to avoid scaring people and to keep the steady flow of tourists, which, by the way, came to 23.7 million people in 2022 alone. And yet, how could a city in the desert achieve such results? How do people in Dubai, who were fishermen and pearl hunters not so long ago, switch to supercars now? Perhaps you think it was oil that determined everything. Well, that's not actually true. Yes, oil fields were indeed found here in 1966, but they did not underlie the rapid development of the city. The fact is that the United Arab Emirates is a union of city-states, each of which has its own sheikh ruler and its own laws. In 1971, Dubai was headed by Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, who was literally obsessed with the idea of transforming Dubai from a poor village into a big, prosperous city. The results were not long in coming and later surpassed all expectations. He clearly realized that oil reserves were scarce in the beginning and that in just a few generations, the people of Dubai would not be driving expensive cars, but camels. Therefore, profits from the oil trade were invested in urban infrastructure and economic projects, one of which was Jebel Ali, the world's largest artificial deep water harbor. The key recipe for success is that they created a free trade zone within the port, providing tax incentives for entrepreneurs and other benefits. Naturally, Dubai became very attractive to entrepreneurs, since this city offered the best possible conditions for doing business. Today, Jebel Ali has over 9,000 registered organizations from around the world, employing about 350,000 people and achieving a turnover of $124 billion, which is about 25% of Dubai's GDP. All of the above-mentioned indicators are growing steadily. The budget is also supplemented by aviation. The tourism sector also contributes a large share of the budget. So gradually, the desert turned into a real oasis. Oil didn't make the biggest difference. Yes, Dubai has changed a lot over the past few decades. Both the area of the city and the height of buildings have increased. Moreover, to expand the coastline, entire artificial islands were created. The city changes so rapidly that sometimes topographers simply don't have time to add new places to the map. There's constant construction going on. The work doesn't stop day or night, 
and it's all about impressing tourists with new architectural records. Just think about it. The construction scale is so huge that every fifth tower crane in the world is located here. In 2022, 28 buildings more than 984 feet tall and 97 buildings more than 656 feet tall were built, which is more than any other city in the world. But Dubai real estate is growing not only in numbers, but also in price. Madonna, David and Victoria Beckham, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie have already bought local luxury properties. This list of celebrities could go on and on. The city's rapid change allows you to experience Dubai almost every year in a new way, with new buildings, beaches, shopping centers, and islands. Dubai strives to be first in everything, to be the place where everything is just the most amazing and unique. Dubai ranks among the 10 best cities on the planet in various ratings and categories. This city is famous for its grandiose sites and architectural records. There is even the first office printed on a 3D printer. Meanwhile, the title of the largest mall in the world still belongs to Dubai Mall, with an area of 12 million square feet, which is equivalent to 200 soccer pitches. The Dubai Mall offers to its visitors more than 1,200 stores and more than 200 food and beverage outlets. This is a whole shopping city featuring almost every brand, and in the middle of the hall stands a waterfall of pearl fishermen, a special tribute to history. Back when there was no oil, pearls were almost the only source of income, and this profession was actually quite dangerous because of the long exposure to salt water and pressure fluctuations. There's also a huge underwater zoo, listed in the Guinness World Records as the largest indoor aquarium in the world, holding over 2.6 million gallons of water and 33,000 different underwater creatures. The largest flower park in the world is also located in Dubai, the Dubai Miracle Garden. It covers 780,000 square feet. There are about 50 million flowers and 250 million plants. Deep in the garden, there is a huge double-decker Airbus A380 completely covered with greenery. Yes, the Dubai people surely have a sense of scale, transforming the largest passenger airliner in the world into a huge flower bed. Just imagine, it required almost 100 short tons of flowers. The garden is simply mind-boggling. After all, once it was a desert with a hot sun and no rivers, but now it's a huge garden. You may be thinking, how is this bloom of greenery maintained? The garden is irrigated with purified water from the city's sewage system. Still, even this is not enough to keep the garden alive all year round. In summer, the fierce heat takes over and simply burns out the local beauty. The only thing to do is to wait until fall when a whole army of workers will replant this vast area. The list of Dubai's records could go on and on. There's the largest artificial island and the tallest Ferris wheel in the world, Ain Dubai. Its height of 820 feet surpassed the last record holder located in Las Vegas. Even Dubai's Emirates airline made the list of records. It was voted the best world's airline for four years in a row. It has the world's biggest fleet of the largest passenger planes and it offers maximum comfort on board. There's even a shower. However, the most famous record of the city is the tallest building in the world. The Burj Khalifa Tower can be seen from almost anywhere in Dubai. Moreover, when the weather is good, you can see the huge peak even from 60 miles. The height of the record holder is 2,717 feet. However, not all of the height is residential as the spire is 590 feet high. The construction started in 2004 and was completed in 2009. In just five years, the giant was built. The construction was so fast that almost every week the tower grew by two stories. A special grade of concrete was used for the construction, which can withstand temperatures of over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside, there are hotels, apartments, offices, gyms, shopping centers, swimming pools, and observation decks. They even aromatize the air in the building. A special fragrance was created just for this tower. Moreover, here was also filmed footage from the Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol movie. One of the fastest elevators in the world lifts people upstairs at a speed of 33 feet per second. It's a real engineering marvel. Inside, there is a light that shows how high the cabin is now. There's also an observation deck at the height of 1,483 feet in the Burj Khalifa. There are two categories of tickets, a simple evening ticket and a more expensive one with the possibility to choose the time. 
Moreover, you get access to the lounge area with delicacies and queue-free entry to the elevator. A virtual reality attraction, transparent swings shaped like spheres, and a souvenir store are next to the observation deck. The catch of this virtual reality is that it repeats footage from the Mission Impossible movie. The player has to climb the wall of a skyscraper from outside, just as Tom Cruise's character did, and at the end, to parachute down. However, the Burj Khalifa will soon cease to be the tallest building in the world as Dubai continues to invest in new facilities. In 2016, a plan was announced to build the Dubai Creek Tower. It is promised to be a mega-tall tower, surpassing the current height record holder. However, it cannot be called a true skyscraper. Only about 20 floors are planned for residential use. They will house hotels, restaurants, and observation decks. Dubai Creek was originally planned to be built in 2020, but due to the pandemic, the construction was put on hold. It is still unclear when such a giant project will be commissioned. Still, Dubai Creek has already partly become a new symbol of the city. A mock-up of the tower can be seen everywhere, and tourists often bring back small souvenir models. Another record breaker on our list is the largest photo frame in the world, the Dubai frame, which displays the rapidly changing face of the city. Its height is 493 feet. At a cost of $40 million, the structure is inlaid with swirling gold patterns and rises to 50 stories, each with an interactive exhibition about Dubai's past and future. The location wasn't random. The frame marks the boundary between the old part of the city and the skyscrapers. At the very top, there is an observation deck, which can be accessed for an extra fee. You may have already noticed that all the buildings cost enormous money, and it's not just because of the expensive design. Constructing in the desert is not an easy job. Before foundations are laid, deep pipes are laid under each pile, which are then filled with cement. This allows the buildings to stand firmly, despite their enormous height. However, tall buildings are not the only thing that strikes the mind. Dubai literally breathes luxury and wealth. The streets are lined with expensive cars, and the shopping malls are filled with elite stores. Cars in Dubai are another thing to talk about. This city is the leader in the number of expensive cars per square foot. Back in 1968, there were only 13 cars registered here. And in 2022, this number approached 2 million. And that's with a population of 3.5 million people. What is most surprising is not the number of cars, but their class. Most of the vehicles are supercars from big name brands and high end car dealerships are spread across the city like grocery stores. Here you can easily buy a Ferrari, Porsche or Bugatti without any pre-orders. In spite of Arab customs, the driving license is issued to both men and women. So don't be surprised if you see a pink Jeep or a Barbie style Hummer on the road. And that's not even the most shocking part. The license plates in this country can easily cost more than the car itself. The shorter the license plate, the cooler and more valuable it is. Regular five-digit numbers are issued for free, but a four-digit number costs at least $5,000. The fewer digits in the number, the more expensive it is. In 2008, a license plate with the number one was sold for $14 million. Luxury life here is practically everywhere. For example, one of Dubai's richest families, the Habtour family, has built their own enormous private polo complex, a giant greenfield right here in the middle of the desert sands. There's a commentary tower and even an entire hotel, from the balconies of which you can watch the competitions. In Dubai, everything is done on a grand scale, and in the wake of the construction boom, artificial islands appeared here. The Palm Jumeirah is Dubai's first palm island and the most famous artificial island in the world. Construction began in 2001, and the project required more than 3.2 billion cubic feet, 93 million cubic meters of ocean sand, and over 7 million short tons of rock. The original plan was to use sand from the desert, but the desert sand proved to be useless. The water simply washed it away. So they had to lift sand from the seabed, which of course affected the overall cost of the facility. The construction was worth $12 billion. Palm Jumeirah consists of three parts, the outside, which is a water park, five-star hotels, and top-level restaurants. Inside, on the 16 branches, are exclusive villas with a unique design and private beach, while on the trunk, there are condominiums, shopping centers, parks, and more affordable facilities. By the way, all 4,000 villas were sold out in 72 hours after putting them on sale. Now, a second Palm Island is under construction in Dubai, Palm Jebel Ali. 
However, it is still unclear when it will be finished. The global crisis has strongly affected the cost of real estate and construction has been suspended. However, not only Palm Islands are being built in Dubai. Right now, there's a new, unique project, the World Archipelago. It is a cluster of 300 islands, forming a map of the world. Each island has its own name, dedicated to a particular country, state, or city. So, the phrase, I bought property in Australia, acquires new meanings. Some islands of the archipelago have already got villas built, including floating ones, each of which is a work of art. There's a private exit directly to the water and transformer pools, while inside there are jacuzzi bathtubs, transparent floors, and underwater rooms where you can watch the ocean inhabitants. By the way, if you want a particular species of fish to swim by outside your window, this can be arranged for you. There are large, luxurious villas on Sweden Island, each with an underwater floor and an elevator. The rooms are furnished with upholstered Bentley furniture and high-end cookware. All the bathrooms are custom-made. Of course, there is a jacuzzi bathtub, as well as a separate gym and sauna. Still, the most amazing thing is the snow room. Inside, there's a constant temperature of 23 degrees Fahrenheit and the snow-making device. So, if you want to jump in the snow after the sauna, just press the button. And after a while, everything is ready. Yes, Dubai surely knows how to surprise. Just imagine you live on an island. There are oceans and palm trees all around, and it seems that the city rush is far away from you. But just 15 minutes and you're back in Dubai with its vibrant nightlife, restaurants, and clubs. However, the pleasure is not cheap. A similar villa costs from 75 to 90 million dirhams, which is about $20 million. Hotels in Dubai are also impressive. There are always options for different budgets and tastes, and the most elite places are competing for supremacy with hotels in Geneva. Perhaps the most famous hotel and definitely one of the symbols of Dubai is Burj Al Arab, or as it is also called, the Sale Hotel. As you might guess, the building couldn't be low. It is 1,053 feet high, with enormous two-story deluxe suites and the world's tallest atrium lobby. Inside, there are 24-karat gold leaf decorations, crystal chandeliers, and velvet curtains. Outside the hotel, there is a huge terrace with swimming pools. The rooms here are also pompous. Their area varies from 1,830 to 8,400 square feet, and the room rates vary from $1,500 to $28,000 per night, depending on the selected room. Not a cheap pleasure, but if you really want to see the luxurious decorations, you can get in for a fee and walk around the huge halls of the hotel. Another equally pompous and extremely expensive hotel is the Armani Hotel. It is located in the Burj Khalifa and was designed by Giorgio Armani himself. It is one of 23 hotels decorated personally by the famous couturier. Another amazing hotel is the five-star Atlantis on Palm Jumeirah. On its opening day, seven times more pyrotechnics were used for the fireworks than for the opening of the Olympic Games in Beijing. It looks simply amazing like an oriental palace in the middle of the ocean. Inside, it's equally stunning. The Atlantis suites offer a huge space with a private elevator and hallway. In addition to the main bedroom, there are guest bedrooms, a massage room, living room, dining room, and bar with billiards. This hotel is a full-fledged city with lots of attractions and entertainment. It has a swimming pool, water park with dolphinarium, as well as its own restaurants, gaming, spa, fitness centers, and stores. Building hotels in Dubai is a profitable business. The construction of such giants often pays off from three to five years. But don't be afraid that a tourist with a limited budget won't find a place to stay. In fact, it is possible to also find cheap hotels. The truth is that Dubai is more cosmopolitan than Arab city, where the boundaries between cultures are being washed away. Yet people still wear traditional clothes and observe Ramadan. But gradually, the people of Dubai are becoming less and less like the typical representatives of the Arab world. Only about 10% of the city's residents are indigenous, the rest are foreigners. There are 180 nationalities living in the city, making a tangible impact on Dubai. Often parents intentionally choose international schools so that the child will get used to the diversity of the local society from childhood. As for salaries, native people holding the same positions are paid two to three times more than foreigners. The average salary in Dubai is $4,490 a month. 
Here, everything works for the people. There is almost no difference between private and state clinics. Treatment is provided on insurance and is good everywhere. But if the patient is in critical condition, the medical care is free. The city's police stations are fully automated. Just walk up to the terminal, enter your data, choose a language, and state the nature of your appeal. If you need to file a complaint, write an application, or submit documents, everything is done in a matter of minutes. You will get a case number which can be used to get further information afterwards. A part of the staff is the tourist police. These guys drive supercars around the city and solve guests' problems. This department is the only one who has such cool cars. The other cops drive ordinary vehicles. So these sports cars are more a means of preserving the city's image and entertaining tourists rather than a necessity. It is almost impossible to get a local passport here. There are only three ways to do it. To save the life of a sheikh, to serve in the local army for several decades, or to win the Olympic Games representing the United Arab Emirates. So you have to be born in an Emirati family. This is a real lucky ticket. The state supports all the locals and makes sure they have jobs and housing. Locals can easily get land or even a whole house. The authorities also worry about the income of citizens. If an Emirati earns less than $20,000, the government tries to raise his income to that level. Moreover, if the family lacks something, they can go to the bank or directly to the sheikh. Most sheikhs have housekeepers, foreigners of course. They work legally and earn between $300 and $800 a month. Moreover, they are provided with accommodation and medical insurance. Even though Dubai is an Arab city, there is no tangible difference between men and women here. They have equal rights both at home and at work. Perhaps you have heard that polygamy is allowed here. Yes, it's true, but it's not easy to get the right to a second wife. The main requirement is that a man must be able to make all his wives happy and resolve any issues that may arise. However, this option is only used if there are valid reasons, for example, if the first wife cannot have children. In Dubai, everything centers on simplicity and accessibility. You can register your business online in a matter of days, and even a state worker can do it. The main point is that there should be no conflict of interest. It is a very profitable activity because there are no taxes in Dubai so far, except for a rather recent introduction of 5% VAT. Although each company has its own employee requirements, a specific part must be of Emirati nationality. But such a beautiful city has a downside too. The migrant workers who rarely manage to access the local luxurious life. Most often they are Hindus, Pakistanis, and Bangladeshis, people who work in construction sites and factories. They live in a separate neighborhood full of dormitories. You don't have to pay for housing, and a supervisor keeps an eye on order. Of course, there is no comfort here. Shared rooms for 10 people, shared showers and toilets, and one is lucky to live in a dormitory. Some people are forced to spend the nights in abandoned old buses or at a construction site. The average worker gets about $270. No matter how scary it sounds, for some people, this is a real solution. They can earn a lot more here than in their own country and they do not even have to have a degree for such work. But let's go back from the city slums to the lively part of the city, because when it comes to entertainment, Dubai can fulfill any fantasy. The city offers its guests the most unexpected and extremely interesting leisure options. If you think that everything is limited to water activities and visits to restaurants, then you are deeply wrong. There are even penguins and real ski slope. Ski Dubai is the first and largest ski complex in the Middle East. Its area of over 240,000 square feet is covered with real snow all year round. It has five ski slopes and a 32,000 square feet snow park with a cave. Winter is artificially created in Ski Dubai. For this purpose, the advanced devices transform water into real snow. It takes about 210 cubic feet of water a week to maintain this miracle. All year round, professional skiers train and sport competitions are held here. Also, there are penguins living here in conditions that are as similar to the real environment as much as possible. The people of Dubai went to such lengths to imitate the movement of the sun. In this amazing city, you can't miss the Museum of the Future. The construction of this structure amounted to about $136 million. This huge, stainless steel building is built in such a way that it seems as if there's not a single seam left on it. It is 225 feet tall, of which 17 are underground. The total area of the premises is 329,000 square feet. The mission of the Museum of the Future is to generate ideas, innovations, inventions, and their further development. 
It is a space for designers, researchers, and financiers. In the Innovation Labs, you can find startups and collaborate with companies and research institutes. In the western part of the city is located Dubai Marina, an elite district with access to the ocean. By the way, it is the second smallest district of the city. Its area covers only 1.9 square miles. Construction of Dubai Marina started in 2003 and it hasn't stopped until now. It is expected to be the largest man-made marina in the world. There are plans to build so many residential complexes that they will accommodate up to 120,000 people. Dubai Marina Beach is considered the best beach in Dubai. There are always lifeguards on duty, free changing rooms, and toilets. But if you need a sun lounger or an umbrella, you have to pay a rental fee. Of course, there are a lot of fun things to do. You can ride jet skis, banana boat, fly fish, and many other activities. Another water attraction is Aquafun, the largest inflatable water park in the world, 426 feet long and 108 feet wide. There are 72 obstacles here. It all looks like the set of some show. Your task is to pass all obstacles as quickly as possible. To avoid giving up in the middle of the way, you will be pushed by the guides, and they will do it without further ado. There's also one more water park in Dubai, considered to be one of the most popular in the United Arab Emirates, called Wild Wadi Water Park. The whole area of the water park features themed slides styled as artificial rivers, all based on the locally famous story of the Arabian hero. Moreover, the slides are connected to each other so that you can take many different routes. In Dubai, men give women gold and diamonds more often than flowers. It is a common thing to go to the market and buy something made of gold. Every person in Dubai buys at least 1.22 troy ounces of gold a year. And do you know how people make marriage proposals here? Do they give an engagement ring? Well, it's too banal for Dubai. It's a common practice here to give 160 troy ounces of gold. On average, every native of Dubai has about 450 troy ounces of gold jewelry at home. But the point is not in the cost of gold, but in the income of the locals. The products themselves are not cheap here, and some are quite expensive because of their uniqueness. No wonder the world's biggest gold ring is on the gold market here. Another Dubai record in the Guinness World Records, it contains 1,864 troy ounces of gold and just over 11 pounds of precious and semi-precious stones, with 615 of them being Swarovski stones of various sizes. To create such a miracle, 55 jewelers worked for 45 days. Another interesting place is the Heritage Village. It is an open-air historical and ethnographic museum dedicated to the life of the local population before the oil deposits were found. It tells everything about local traditions, professions, crafts, everyday life, and culture in Dubai. All of these places are easily accessible because getting around the city is very simple. Dubai has excellent roads and a well-developed public transport system. Bus stops are equipped with air conditioning so you don't have to suffer from hot sun. The heart of public transport is the subway. In Dubai, it is fully automated, with a network length of 55.7 miles being constantly expanded. Everything is automatically controlled here. Schedules, routes, train cleaning. Just over 2,000 people work for the entire huge network. And even if there is a failure in the system, it tries to solve it automatically. If it fails, an emergency team of technicians is summoned to solve all problems within 20 to 30 minutes. Until the malfunction is fixed, passengers are taken to their destination by bus. The entire Dubai subway is above ground. The city is divided into zones, and the cost of a ride depends on how many zones you pass. Every day, 550,000 people are transported here. The carriages are divided into classes, which are general, with separate carriages for women and children, and gold carriages for gold card holders. The elite neighborhoods are not jammed, even during rush hours. A trip to Dubai cannot do without night walks around the city. In darkness, the city switches to a completely different state. The buildings change their appearance and are illuminated with a lot of lights. Everything is lit up here, even the bridges. There are parties outdoors, people go out, and the main every night event is the Dubai Fountain Show. It is not only a spectacular event with a typical Dubai scale, but it is also absolutely free. If you need more than just looking at the fountains, you can go to another water show. This one is all about the images projected directly on the water. Another popular local attraction that takes place outside the noisy city is a Jeep Safari. It is really worth visiting. The safari includes not only riding, but also a separate evening activity. 
You can take pictures in national dress, do a henna drawing, or ride a camel, all at no extra charge. Tea and coffee are also included, and the evening culminates with the performance of oriental dancing and a fire show, as well as a delicious dinner with national food right in the middle of the desert. This is what Dubai is, a modern oriental fairy tale. Not long ago, it was a small port town with a population of only 20,000 people. Locals cooked on fire, lived mostly in tents, and today there are more than 10 million people, luxury villas, and a steady, ongoing flow of tourists. In this video, we've already seen many amazing places, but this is only a small part of what Dubai has to offer tourists. It is a city of records, money, and ambition, a legendary metropolis that creates its own islands, turns heat into cold, and the desert into a garden paradise. One of the economic wonders of the world. We're curious to hear your opinion about this video in the comments. At this point, we get to the end of our video. We hope you liked the video. Please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on your way out. This will only take a split second, but surely pump the YouTube algorithm to bring our videos to the top. See you in the next video.